Oh, hi. Hey, Chef Greg here, uh, coming from my house to yours. Um, in my spare time when I'm not in the kitchen, I like to do things around the house. And as you can see, I've got a project on my hands, uh, putting a new hardwood floor in my daughter's bedroom. So that means that I have a little bit of a time situation going on here, but we still need to eat. So would you join me? We'll go downstairs to my kitchen and I'm gonna show you how to make some one of our favorites at home. Uh, it's a very quick and uh, fast dinner. It's a, uh, our version of a shepherd's pie. Okay, so now we're down in the kitchen. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, making our shepherd's pie. And today we're gonna be using ground beef. You can do it in a, a number of different ways. You can use uh, ground chicken if you'd like and try a version like that, or ground turkey, and even uh, maybe some Italian sausage mixed in, or ground lamb if you prefer. Uh, but today we're just gonna use your regular basic ground beef. All the ingredients that we're gonna be using today are stuff that's readily available. You should be, you should be able to find them at your market. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more with uh, obviously some of the current conditions that we're underneath, uh, we're all underneath right now. Um, so we're gonna start with the hot skillet already. We've got our pan warmed up. We're gonna drop our ground beef right into there and start cooking that. Like I said, you can also use uh, different things if you don't like ground beef. Um, Italian sausage, chicken, turkey burger might be a good alternative. Uh, I'm not sure if the impossible burger might work in this case. It's always worth a try. So I'm gonna start cooking my ground beef. And as I do that, I'm gonna add a little bit of minced garlic here. Minced garlic and olive oil. Probably two, two and a half spoonfuls there. We're gonna throw that in with the ground beef. Set that aside. Uh, we like pepper here, so I'm gonna add some fresh ground black pepper into our ground beef. And a lot of this is personal preference. My goal is just to kind of show you the method of what we're doing and not necessarily the measurements. Everything is kind of to your liking or to your taste. So by no means is this written in stone. You can uh, obviously change it or adapt it however you choose. A little ground uh, sea salt here in there with our burger. Give it a little seasoning. And as our burger cooks, uh, it shouldn't take too long to get this done. Uh, what we'll do when it's finished is we will actually uh, strain a lot of the, the rendered fat that's in there um, to get that out of there because we don't want a super greasy, greasy shepherd's pie. The next thing that we want to do is prep some of our other ingredients and get those ready to go into the, the shepherd's pie. So we serve it with mashed potatoes and I have some of my potatoes already peeled and cut up. I'm just going to finish peeling this potato. Um, and talk a little bit while I do that. Uh, I actually joined today by my uh, silent partner here and sous chef, Ava, my daughter. Give him a little wave, Ava. Let him know that you're there. She's the one that's taking care of the, uh, the filming for me today because there's no way that I could do this all by myself. So we're gonna get these potatoes going and uh, put them in a pot. I'll cut them a little smaller so they cook faster for us. And then we're going to, uh, we're gonna move on to um, slicing our mushrooms and getting those ready to go. So I've had a lot of people tell me that, you know, do you rinse your mushrooms? Do you not rinse your mushrooms? Do you brush them off? What do you do with mushrooms? Personally, uh, I like to give them a little bit of a rinse uh, since they've, you know, they're grown in the dirt and things like that. Uh, people often say, if you do that, then you, you wash away a lot of the flavor. I don't think that's necessarily true, but I do like to wash off some of that dirt or some of that mud. Uh, likewise with fresh herbs. Uh, it's surprising sometimes the people that I run across that that uh, don't rinse their fresh herbs. And once they do, they are amazed at how much of the sand and stuff they see in the bottom of the bowl once they rinse them. So we're almost done with our mushrooms here. Our potatoes are getting ready to go uh, into, we're gonna put some water in there and get those boiling, get those cooked. Uh, we'll just finish slicing up these mushrooms really quick. And then we'll be back on our way to, uh, to making our dinner. Uh, people always ask me too, another question I always get is, who cooks at home, you or your wife? Well. Uh, we kind of share that responsibility. She's a very good cook, but um, you know, I work at night a lot. So uh, sometimes I'll do things to kind of get it started and she just finishes it. Or uh, she's got quite a few of her own recipes that are, are very, very good. So now that we have this ready to go, I will meet you back at the stove. stove and we got our pan hot again. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to add our mushrooms to our pan. As you can see, if uh, maybe you can't see, hopefully you can. Uh, there's just a little bit of residual um, grease or uh, fat from the hamburger in there just a little bit and that's okay uh, we want a little bit of that to um, to get our mushrooms going here and we'll set this aside 
We've got a little bit of garlic oil here we're going to add, just a pinch to um, help the mushrooms along a little bit. Uh, we've given our hamburger a chance to um, strain, so we've strained out a lot of the extra fat that's in there. Put that away. We're going to get our mushrooms to cook really quick for us here, and then we'll add our other ingredients to that. Mushrooms are made up of a lot of water, so it's important when you're cooking mushrooms you don't put too many in the pan or else they'll just kind of start to steam themselves with all the moisture that they release. So I think we've just about got as much as we can in this pan. We'll give them a little space, a little time to cook. Likewise with these, I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt to them. And a little bit of um, fresh ground black pepper. I don't know if you can see this, Ava. Did you have a picture of the potatoes there for them? Those are starting to starting to do their thing in the pot, getting hot. So we're going to let those cook, which will work out perfect for us because as those cook, our, um, we'll finish this up. We'll probably be a little bit ahead of this, but that's okay. Like I said, this recipe is uh, designed to be made with things that are pretty common. Nothing really exotic here. Um, and as I, I touched on that previously, uh, one thing I am using today, and um, I don't use a lot, but sometimes I do if I have a, a, a situation where I want to get dinner done quickly, uh, I still want it to be good. Uh, I purchased these vegetables. These are um, actually frozen vegetables. Uh, a little assortment there of peas, green beans, carrots, corn. Uh, there's a few asparagus chips in there. But, um, once in a while, that's okay to do that. Uh, the frozen foods has uh, come a long way with as far as vegetables and things like that. And um, you still retain uh, some nutritional value in there, but uh, not battling everybody in, in the produce section, trying to get you know five different kinds of vegetables and some in a hurry, it works out really well. So I've got my uh, mushrooms cooking here, which is what I want. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, Add my, add my vegetables to my mushrooms. I'm gonna dump those right in there like that. Very easy. It's all done for me. All right, so our shepherd's pie is now up to a simmer. I just simply took a little bit of cornstarch and water and mixed it together. This is gonna create a, a thickening agent for us. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of slowly pour this in. And you always wanna make sure if you're ever using, this is called a slurry, a cornstarch slurry. If you ever use a slurry, you always want your sauce to be simmering so you can add it in and you'll almost see it thicken immediately as it as it goes and as i said before it's a little bit healthier than using something uh like a roux but it's also you don't have to worry really about having lumps in your sauce either uh because it kind of just blends right in it's basically almost in a liquid form when you do it so as you can see i had quite a bit of filling so i took a little bit of the filling out and i wanted to keep this sauce I'm just gonna let this cook for probably about five, 10 seconds here, bring it back up to a simmer, let it thicken all the way, and then I'm gonna add it back to my pan. I also went ahead and drained the potatoes and whipped those in my mixer. Uh, a little sour cream, butter, salt and pepper, and they were good to go. So I'm gonna take this off the burner now, and I'm gonna carefully pour it on top of the already existing filling that I had in there, just like that. And I'm going to fold that in. Now, if it looks like it might be a little too thick or you want more sauce, uh, you can always add it at this point, or you can just make some on the side and serve it with the dish. You don't want this to turn out to be a really soupy type of entree. So we've mixed it in. It's got some nice um, sauce inside there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my potatoes. I'm going to put these on top. Just spread them out on top of the filling. Now you can, once you do this, you have a couple choices. You can put them in just like this, or you can always add a little breadcrumb. Might give it a little bit more of a texture for you if that's something you like. And I'm gonna get a little potato here. Now,
Not a bad idea to have a little extra potato on the side too if people like that. So one thing I failed to do when we were on the video earlier before we took a little break was I didn't turn my oven on. So my oven is on now and uh, it's at 325. So it's very controllable. I can give it a few minutes and things aren't gonna burn right away. Uh, and I'll set my timer probably for about a half an hour and cook the potatoes until they're golden brown. And I think with ours, I think we were gonna add a little bit of breadcrumb to it just to give it a little crunch. So there's my, Here's my potato topping. I'll throw a couple um, breadcrumbs on this and we'll pop it right in the oven. Okay, so we're back and the moment of truth is here. We're gonna open up the oven and get our pot pie, or I'm sorry, our shepherd's pie out here. Uh, looks good, doesn't it? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that sit for a minute because it's obviously very, very hot and um, Get our plates and drinks and everything else ready. A good Caesar salad or a salad with a light vinaigrette would be great with this. Um, you can get a little browner on top if you like. Turn your broiler on and, and, and let that brown a little bit more. Um, this to me looks just about right. So we're gonna let that sit for a minute. Uh, then we're gonna get down to business with it. Um, and then I've got some business to finish upstairs and finishing that floor. So thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time. Be well.